Good afternoon, guys. Welcome back once again to FA F15C uh, Basic Fundamentals, where we will be wrapping up the basics of the radar tutorial. Um, there will be a whole lot more on the radar to come as we start going through the weapon systems, but they, those videos will be focused primarily on the missiles themselves. Okay. So, getting right into it, I've already spawned uh, four enemy aircraft, so we're going to move pretty quick here. First thing I want to do is set our radar range to 80. We're going to bring our elevation down to about 28, 30,000 feet. That's fine. We're going to switch our RPF into high, okay, because these guys are at a distance, and there they are. Now, real quick cover a couple things here try to kill a couple birds of one stone as much as possible so notice right away that we have uh, multiple targets okay this is what they will look like the further out they go and what I mean by that is we have a total of four contacts out now you guys wouldn't know that because I spawned them before you guys came in but I've, I've brought in four four enemy birds but look at the mess that they create in range while scan at the distance and um, that is the disadvantage to scanning out at a distance. If these guys were much closer together, these are AI, right? So they don't fly as tight as, as some of the uh, guys do in multiplayer. So at a distance, if they're flying real tight or right on top of each other, you may not notice that there's more than one of them. Or, for example, if there's four or five of them, you may have trouble distinguishing that. So always keep an eye on what's going on around you. But we can see that the IFF is returning back that they are unidentified at the moment. Okay, and what we're going to do is unpause, and we're going to switch ourselves into track wall scan by hitting left alt in India. It resets the radar. Now let's go ahead and pause for a second and talk about a couple things. So first off, we can see our indication of track wall scan down here in the lower uh, left quadrant. We can see that the radar range has now been restricted from 60 degrees of azimuth to 30 degrees of azimuth, right? The azimuth is the... Uh, total band at which you will scan at, or the total range, I should say. But we get some kind of cool information. Now, they're stacked on top of each other. It's pretty hard to read, but you get the general idea. First, if you notice, each one of these vertical lines is the aspect of the target. Okay, that's the direction they're heading. So if they were heading away from us, just like before, these vertical lines would be pointing up. So, and this is without locking. So the advantage of track wall scan, one of the advantages right off the bat, is you get the aircraft's aspect and you get its altitude without locking them up. So they have... They know that there's a radar signature coming from an F-15. However, they have no idea uh, that we're tracking them. We haven't locked them up. They're not getting an alert in their uh, RWR stating that they've been locked. All they know is that they're being tracked, that, that there's an F-15 or a radar signature. They may not even know it's an F-15 yet. They know there's a radar signature out there that is seeing them. That's all they know right now. Okay, so one advantage. Second advantage is we get their altitude reading. It looks like they're about 23,000 feet. They're right on top of each other, so we're hard to tell. And again, we're getting, you know, as I've already stated, we're getting their aspect, so we know which direction they're coming. And it changes pretty rapidly. If they start to bank, we'll see it pretty quick. Okay? So those are the advantages. Again, disadvantage is that we are limited to the 30 degrees. And I'm going to show you what an automatic disadvantage right there is. So we see these guys, but let's say we get a report to the right. So let's go ahead and bring it to the right. I'm going to unpause my camera so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to bring them out. And what I'm going to do here, so I'm going to bring them right to the edge. And then I'm going to slew, put this thing back in autopilot. Are you going to come back up? Okay, you're not feeling the confidence here. There she goes. There she goes. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slew the TDC. Remember I said you can use skin zone left or right, or you can just move the TDC all the way over. And watch what happens to these guys. Remember I said... Now remember I... Uh, this is... You just saw a perfect example of what I was talking about. We moved... The, we moved our flashlight to the far right, where these guys were no longer being illuminated by our flashlight. But it took a second for the radar screen for the VSD to reflect that. So remember, be patient. Okay, Be diligent about giving the radar time to give you the information that you're looking for. Okay, So, they're now out of our flashlight. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to change my course. I'm simply going to slew the scan zone, turn our flashlight to the left, and there they are again. Now, what I'm going to do next is 
we're seeing them still right on top of each other, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reduce the VSD range, the display range, right? So we're going to change our display to 40. All right. Now, as you, they get in closer, we can see a whole lot more information. All right. Now it's real clear to see the four individual targets there. We can see their altitudes, 22 and 23,000 feet. Okay. And next what we're going to do is take our TDC and we're going to bug one. So come over it and we're going to hit enter. All right. So this is called a soft lock. Okay. We are locking this target. We are seeing that, you know, all the information that we saw on single target track. Okay. So we've got his bearing down here at 175 degrees, 25 nautical miles out, closure rate of 1,337 knots. He's uh, on a head-on aspect, heading 356 degrees with a true airspeed of 954 knots at 21,700 feet. Okay, we still see all that information. And even down here at the bottom, we can see that the IFF uh, return is still unknown. But the nice thing about TWS is, so we've locked him, and he has absolutely no idea that we've done it. Okay, that's the advantage to track while scan. That's the, the, one of the biggest ones, is you can lock a target and he has no idea. Okay. Now, the other advantage is we have locked a target. We've got a primary target. We could fire on him right now. If I had the weapon systems armed right now, if, if say I had the AMRAM selected and I was in uh, BVR uh, configuration, I could fire on him. Okay. And the missile would still track and eventually would go pit bull. Um, the problem is with TWS is it's also much easier to break radar contact. Okay, and if we lose radar contact before the AMRAM goes pitbull, right? And we'll talk about, I think we talked about what pitbull was once before, but I'll talk about it real briefly. Um, the AMRAM is an active radar missile, meaning that it has its own radar on board, but it only works within a certain range of the target. Okay, until it hits its range where it can go what we call pitbull, which is when the missile takes over its guidance, it's receiving all of its own radar has locked onto the target. We call that pit bull until the missile's close enough to go pit bull it. The missile still needs to get the information from us, from the aircraft. And so if we lose contact before the missiles hit pit bull. That missile now is a dead missile. It's going to go dumb. Okay. It's not going to hit our target. So that's one of the disadvantages to it is because in single target track, which is what happens when we lock a target in range while scan, 100% of the radar's energy is focused on that one aircraft. That's why we can't see anything else. Okay. Okay. So it's very important to really be aware of the pros and cons of uh, each version of the radar or each operation of the radar. Excuse me, not version. Um, range wall scan, 100% energy focus, much less likely to lose radar contact, much better for we weapon employment if you are concerned about the aircraft maneuvering or you may have to maneuver whatever. Okay. Track wall scan, you can lock a target, receive all the telemetry information, exact location, you can launch on an aircraft, and he doesn't know it. Now, he will still get the alert when the missile goes pit bull, okay? And we'll talk about that when we start talking about the uh, AMRAM tutorials. But basically, when the missile has locked onto him, he'll get an alert in his aircraft that he's been fired upon, okay? But typically, especially with an AMRAM, it's a super fast missile. Um, by that point, nine out of ten times, too late, okay? But we'll talk about that. I, I digress a little bit. Um, but the nice thing about that, again, and, and with track wall scan, is you can also see the other targets and what they're doing. So if you have, example here, you have a four-ship flight, and you fire on one, you're also going to be able to see what his buddies are doing. And there's a couple other advantages that I'll show you here in just a second. Okay. So the other advantage here, and I'm going to try to put this into active pause and see if I can slow this down here. Uh, I think it was shift wind pause. Okay. Oh, that didn't help at all. They're still coming right at us just as fast as they were. Okay. So real quickly, I'm going to try to do this super fast and then pause the screen again. So we're going to bug them. Notice that I'm locking up the other targets. Okay. So now I'm going to hit pause again. So now here's what we've got. We've now identified four individual targets. Okay. Um, we have our primary and then we have one, two, and three. Now what have we done here? is we have created the ability by the way real quick not to um, digress again but notice that also in track wall scan once we get close enough the iff has also identified the aircraft we now know it's a mig 29 
Okay, so and again, another cool fact. We're getting the exact same information on the primary aircraft. You need to keep that in mind. This only counts for this aircraft right here that, you know, has the uh, the primary icon indication. And I'll give you guys a better look at that here. Once they break 20 nautical miles, we'll zoom in again. Okay, and then you'll get a real clear picture of what's happening. And actually, um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that real quick. So let them break. 20. Let them get too close. They're going to shoot at our asses. All right. Did I spawn five aircraft? I might have spawned five aircraft. I think I did. Let's do this real quick here. Pretty sure I did. Yep, I did. All right. So that's another cool thing to show you guys here. So notice what's happened here. So we have a total of five aircraft here. Didn't realize I spawned that many. And we've only can bug four. Okay. So what I've done is I've create essentially created four targets, one for each um, of the active radar guided missiles. Okay. Meaning that if I had four AMRAMs on board and I had them selected, I would fire one. It would go after this primary target first. Then this prime, then the next missile would automatically go after the first bug target, the second, and the third. Okay, simultaneously. So you fire a missile. Okay, so we'd fox three, and all we do is fox three again. It would go after two. Fox three again. It would go after three. Fox three again. It would go after four. Okay, for a total of four aircraft. Okay, but now notice if you have five aircraft, we can still see him there, but he's not locked. Okay, so we would have to launch on all of these guys lose the radar contact and then reacquire this guy here okay but and we'll go into what that looks like in the next tutorial we will absolutely be deploying the amram um, but i wanted you guys to sort of see what that looks like okay um let's see here so we've gone over the information that we get the other thing that i want you guys to be able to know is that if in the event that you determine that you need to switch into single target track you need to make one target your primary all we're going to do is mouse over our primary and bug him again Okay, and now we're, if you look down here in the bottom left, we're in single target track. So we just hit enter again. By the way, when I say bug, I mean hit enter. Okay, so we've gone into single target track. All of our same information show here, MiG-29, 166, with a range of 12 nautical miles, almost 1,400 knots closure. He's on a heading of 348 degrees with a head-on aspect. And uh, he's got over 1,000 knots uh, true airspeed, and he's at 20,700 feet. Okay. So I hope that sort of uh, clears up TWS. To switch back out of TWS, we're just going to simply unpause, unlock our target because we're in single target track, and hit Alt India again, and there we go. Okay, we're back in range while scan. Now notice in range while scan, that's the other thing. In track while scan, we're not, if you notice, we're not getting the echoes. Okay, see how the echoes have created that we were talking about last night? Um, we don't get those in track wall scan. So if we go back and track wall scan real quick before these guys pass us. It's a real clear picture, right? There's no echoes. There's no indication that nothing can to confuse us. So that's the other thing that's nice about track wall scan is you get a much clearer picture of the battle area and you also get a much faster response. Okay. Um, so I think that pretty much sums it up for this course. This was a short one. Um, the only reason why I didn't attach it to the end of the last one is because the last one has so much information in it. We had to go over controls. We went over, you know, range wall scan and its functionality that, you know, I feel like if the videos get too long, people lose interest and things like that. And so that's why I broke this up into two segments. All right. Um, as usual, if you guys have questions, by all means, please let me know. Um, I'll be happy to respond um, or uh, reevaluate this tutorial if it was incomplete or if you felt that it was hard to follow. Please let me know that. That's important information for me. I really want to know. Um, I really want to hear from you guys how I'm doing. Um, I built this channel for you guys. I built this channel with the intent of reducing the, the learning curve. Um, primarily for DCS world, you know, I'm going to start expanding some other things. We're going to get into X plane, American truck simulator. We're going to start doing some other projects as well. Um, but primarily I, I built this for DCS, you know, DCS was a really hard, uh, hard sim to get into if you didn't have the knowledge beforehand. 
Um, so I, I'm trying to alleviate some of that. So if these tutorials are hard to follow or, um, you know, that, that's why, for example, if you guys notice, for those of you who have watched my earlier videos, I don't do the radio effect anymore. Um, there were enough comments about me being hard to understand that I decided, well, yes, it was cool for the immersion, but I'm going to go ahead and remove it because I much rather you guys be able to, uh, understand what I'm saying as a tutorial then hey wow that sounds kind of cool he's talking out of a radio you know what i mean so please leave comments in the field below if you liked the video pound that like button please hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel we'd love to have you part of the family and until next time guys this is overkill i'll see you take care